Allah says that those who committed these evil acts have earned the loss of this life and the hereafter. As for this life, they lost when they killed their children and made it difficult for themselves by prohibiting some types of their wealth as an act of innovation that they invented on their own. As for the hereafter, they will end up in the worst dwellings because they used to lie about Allah and invent falsehood about Him. Allah also said, Say, Verily, those who invent a lie against Allah will never be successful. A brief enjoyment in this world and then unto us will be their return. Then we shall make them taste the severest torment because they used to disbelieve. <clears throat> 10, 69 and 70 Al-Hafiz Abu Bakr bin Marduvia recorded that Ibn Abbas commented If it pleases you to know how ignorant the Arabs used to be then recite the ayat beyond ayah 130 in Surat Al-Anam Indeed lost are they who have killed their children foolishly without knowledge and they have forbidden that which Allah has provided for them, inventing a lie against Allah. They have indeed gone astray <coughs> and were not guided. Al Bukhari also recorded this in the section of his Sahih on the virtues of the Quraysh. 141. And it is he who produces gardens Marushat and not Marushat. Uh, and date palms and crops of different shape and taste and olives and pom pomegranates similar and different eat of their fruit when they ri when they ripen but pay the due thereof on the day of their harvest and waste not by extravagance verily he likes not the wasteful 142 and of the cattle are some for burden and some smaller for fash. Eat of what Allah has provided for you and follow not the footsteps of shaitan. Surely he is to you an open enemy. <coughs> Allah created the produce, seed grains and cattle. Allah states that he created everything including the produce, fruits and cattle that the idolaters mishandled by their misguided ideas, <laughs> dividing them into various designated parts, allowing some and prohibiting some, Allah said. And it is he who produces gardens, Marushat and not Marushat. Ali bin Abitala reported that Ibn Abbas commented, Marushat refers to what the people tr trilize, while not Marushat refers to fruits and produce that grow wild inland and on mountains. Atta al-Qurasani said that Ibn Abbas said Marushat are the grapevines that are trellished while not Marushat refers to grapevines that are not trellished. Asudi said similarly as for these fruits being similar yet different Ibn Juraj said they are similar in shape but different in taste. Muhammad bin Kab said that the ayah <clears throat> eat of their fruit when they ripen means eat from the dates and grapes they produce <laughs> Allah said next but pay the due thereof on the day of their harvest Mujahid commented when the poor people are present on the day of harvest give them some of their produce Abdur Razak recorded that Mujahid commented on the ayah. <clears throat> but pay the due thereof on the day of their harvest. When planting, one gives away handfuls of seed grains. And on harvest, he gives away handfuls and allows them to pick whatever is left on the ground of the harvest. At Favri said that Hamad narrated that Ibrahim al Nakai said. One gives away some of the hay. Ibn al Mubarak said that Shuraik said that Salim said that Said bin Jubayr commented. <laughs> but pay the due thereof on the day of their harvest. This ruling, giving the poor the handfuls, 
of seed grains and some of the hay as food for their animals was before zakah became obligatory. Allah has chastised those who harvest without giving away a part of it as charity. Allah mentioned the story of the owners of the garden in Surat Nun. <coughs> when they swore to pluck the fruits of the garden in the morning without saying, if Allah wills, then there passed by on the garden a visitation fire from your Lord at night, burning it while they were asleep. So the garden became black by the morning, like a pitch dark night in complete ruins. Then they called out one to another, as soon as the morning broke, saying, Go to your tilt in the morning, if you would pluck the fruits. So they departed, conversing in secret low tones, saying, No poor person shall enter upon you into it today. And they went in the morning with strong intention, thinking that they have power to prevent the poor taking anything of the fruits therefrom. But when they saw the garden, they said, Verily we have gone astray. They, then they said, Nay, indeed we are deprived of the fruits. The best among them said, Did I not tell you why say you not, if Allah wills? They said, Glory to our Lord, verily we have been wrongdoers. Then they had turned one against another, blaming. They said, <coughs> Woe to us, we are transgressed. We hope that our Lord will give us in exchange a better garden than this. Truly, we turn to our Lord. Search is the punishment in this life. But truly, the punishment of the hereafter is greater if they but knew. 68, 18 and 33 <laughs> Prohibiting extravagance, Allah said, And waste not by extravagance, verily he likes not the wasteful. It was said that the extravagance prohibited here refers to excessive charity beyond normal amounts. Ibn Juraj said, <coughs> This ayah was revealed concerning Fabit bin Qais bin Shamas, who plucked the fruits of his date palms. Then he said to himself, this day every person who comes to me I will feed him from it. So he kept feeding them until the evening came and he ended up with no dates. Allah sent down. And waste not by extravagance, verily he likes not the wasteful. Ibn Jarid recorded this statement from Ibn Juraj. However, the apparent meaning of this ayah, and Allah knows best, is that eat of their fruit when they ripen, but pay the due thereof on the day of their harvest, and waste not, refers to eating, meaning do not waste in eating because this spoils the mind and the body. Allah said in another ayah, <coughs> and eat and drink but waste not by extravagance. 731 in his Sahih, Al-Bukhari recorded a hadith without a chain of narration. Uh, Eat, drink, and clothe yourselves without extravagance or arrogance. Therefore, these ayat have the same meaning as this hadith, and Allah knows best. Benefits of cattle Allah's statement, and of the cattle are some for burden, and some smaller for fash, meaning it means he created the cattle for you, some of which are suitable for burden, such as camels, and some are fash. At Favri narrated that Abu Ishaq said that Abu al Awas said that Abdullah said that animals for burden are the camels that are used for carrying things, while Fash refers to small camels. Al Hakim recorded it and said, Its chain is Sahih, and they did not record it. <coughs> Abdul Rahman bin Said bin Aslam said that animals for burden refers to the animals that people ride while fash is that they eat its meat and milk it. The sheep is not able to carry things, so you eat its meat and use its wool for covers and mats or clothes. This statement of Abdur Rahman is sound, and the following ayat testify to it. Do they not see that we have created for them of what our hands have created, the cattle, so that they are their owners? 
and we have subdued them unto them so that some of them they have for riding and some they eat 36 71 and 72 and <coughs> and rarely in the cattle there is a lesson for you we give to you uh, we give you to drink of that which is in their bellies from between ex excretions and blood pure milk palat palatable to the drinkers 1666 until <laughs> and of their wool fur and hair furnishings and articles of convenience comfort for a while 1680 eat the meat of these cattle but do not follow shaitan's law concerning them Allah said eat of what Allah has provided for you of fruits produce and cattle Allah created all these and provided you with them as provision and follow not the footsteps of shaitan meaning his way and orders just as the idolaters followed him and prohibited fruits and produce that Allah provided for them claiming that this falsehood came from Allah Surely he is to you, meaning Shaitan, O people, is to you an open enemy, and his enmity to you is clear and apparent. Allah said in other ayat, Surely Shaitan is an enemy to you, so take, treat him as an enemy. He only invites his hisp followers that they may become the dwellers of the blazing fire. <laughs> 35 6 and O children of Adam let not shaitan deceive you as he got your parents out of paradise stripping them of their raiment to show them their private parts 727 and will you then take him Iblis and his offspring as protectors and helpers rather than me while they are enemies to you what an evil is the exchange for the wrongdoers 1850 There are many other ayat on this subject 143 8 pairs of the sheep 2 male and female and of the goats 2 male and female Say has he forbidden the 2 males or the 2 females or the young which the wombs of the 2 females enclose inform me with knowledge if you are truthful 144 and of the camels too, and of oxen too. Say, has he forbidden the two males or the two females or the young, which the wombs of the two females enclose? Or were you present when Allah ordered you such a thing? Then who does more wrong than one who invents a lie against Allah to lead mankind astray without knowledge? Certainly Allah guides not the people who are wrongdoers. <laughs> These ayat demonstrate the ignorance of the Arabs, Arabs before Islam. They used to prohibit the usage of some of their cattle and designate them as Bahira, Saiba, Vasila and Ham, etc. These were some of the innovations they invented for cattle, fruits and produce. Allah stated that he has created gardens, trellished and untrellished and cattle as animals of burden and as fush. Allah next mentioned various kinds of cattle, male and female, such as, such as sheep and goats. He also created male and female camels, and the same with cows. Allah did not prohibit any of these cattle or their offspring. Rather, they all were created for the sons of Adam as a source for food, transportation, work, milk, and other benefits, which are many, Allah said. <laughs> And he has sent down for you of cattle eight pairs. 39 6. <coughs> Allah said, Or the young which the wombs of the two female enclose. This refutes the idolater's statement. What is in the bellies of such and such cattle is for our males alone, and forbidden to our females. 6 139. Allah said, <laughs> Inform me with knowledge if you are truthful, meaning tell me with sure knowledge how and when did Allah prohibit what you claimed is prohibited. 
such as the Bahira, Saiba, Wasila, and Ham, etc. Al Alfi said that Ibn Abbas said Allah's statement. <coughs> Eight pairs of the sheep, two, and of the goats, two. These are four pairs. Say, has he forbidden the two males of the two females? <coughs> uh, say, has he forbidden the two males or the two females? I, Allah, did not prohibit any of these, or the young which the wombs of the two females enclose. And does the womb produce both males and females, so why do you prohibit some and allow some others? Inform me with knowledge if you are truthful. Allah is saying that all of this is allowed. Allah said, <coughs> or, were you, uh, or were you present when Allah ordered you such a thing, mocking the, the idolaters' innovations and their lies that Allah made sacred what they have prohibited? Then who does more wrong than one who invents a lie against Allah to lead mankind astray without knowledge? Therefore, no one is more unjust than the people described here, and certainly Allah guides not the people who are wrongdoers. The person most worthy of this condemnation is Amr bin Luhay bin Kuma. He was the first person to change the religion of the prophets and designate the Saiba, Wasila, and Ham, as mentioned in the Sahih. 145 say, I find not in that which has been revealed to me anything forbidden to be eaten by one who wishes to eat it, unless it be unless it be maita, a dead animal, or blood poured forth, or the flesh of swine, for that surely is unclean, rich, or, immora, in, or immor, immorally slaughtered in the name of other than Allah. But whosoever is forced by necessity without willful disobedience, nor transgressing due limits, for him certainly your Lord is of forgiving, most merciful. <coughs> Forbidden things. Allah commands his servants his servant and messenger Muhammad, say, O Muhammad, to those who prohibited what Allah has provided them, claiming this falsehood to be from Allah. I find not in that which has been revealed to me anything forbidden to be eaten by one who wishes to eat it. This ayah means I do not find any animals that are prohibited except these mentioned here. We should mention here that the prohibited things mentioned in Surat al maidah and the hadiths on this subject amend the meaning of this ayah. <laughs> or blood poured, Katada commented, poured blood was prohibited. But the meat that still has some blood in it is allowed. Al Humaydi said that Sufyan narrated to us that Amr bin Dinar narrated to us. I said to Jabir bin Abdullah, they claim that the Messenger of Allah prohibited the meat of donkeys during the day of Kaibar. He said Al Hakam bin Amr narrated that from the Messenger of Allah, that scholar referring to Ibn Abbas denied it, reciting the ayah. <laughs> Say, I find I find not in that which has been revealed to me anything forbidden to be eaten by one who wishes to eat it. Al Bukhari and Abu Dawud collected it. Abu Bakr bin Marduvia and Al Hakim in his Mustadrak recorded that Ibn Abbas said, During the time of Jahiliya, the people used to eat some things and avoid some other things because they disliked them. Later on, Allah sent his Prophet, revealed his book allowed what he allowed, and prohibited what he prohibited. Therefore, whatever Allah allowed is lawful, and whatever he prohibited is unlawful. Whatever he did not mention, there is no sin in it. He then recited the ayah. Say, I find not in that which has been revealed to me anything forbidden to be eaten by one who wishes to eat it. This is the wording which, uh, with Ibn Marduvia, Abu Dawud also recorded this statement. And Allah Hakim said, Its chain is Sahih, and they did not record it. Imam Ahmad recorded that Ibn Abbas said, A sheep belonging to Savada bin Sama died, and she, di um, and she said, <coughs> O Allah's Messenger, so and so sheep has died. He said, Why did you not use its skin? She said, 
should we use the skin of a sheep that has died? Allah's Messenger said, Allah only said, Say, I find not in that which has been revealed to be anything forbidden to be eaten by one who wishes to eat it, except maita, a dead animal, or blood poured forth, or the flesh of swine. You will not be eating it if you tan its skin and benefit from it. So she had the sheep skinned. <laughs> Their skin was tanned and made into a water skin that she kept until it wore out. Al-Bukhari and an nasai collected a similar hadith, Allah said. But whosoever is forced by necessity without willful disobedience, nor transgressing due limits. Therefore, whoever is forced by necessity to eat anything that Allah has forbidden in this honorable ayah without transgressing its limits, then for him, certainly your Lord is of forgiving, most merciful. We mentioned the explanation of this ayah in Surat al-Baqarah. This honorable ayah contradicts the idolaters who in innovated prohibitions for certain kinds of, f of wealth. Relying merely on their misguided ideas, such as the Bahira, Saiba, Vasila, and Ham. Allah commanded his messenger to inform them that he does not find that such types of animals are prohibited in what Allah revealed to him. In this ayah, Allah only prohibited dead animals, poured blood, the flesh of swine, and what has been slaughtered for something other than Allah. Other things were not prohibited here but rather treated as that which does not have a ruling, yea, permissible. Therefore, how do you, idolaters, claim that such items are prohibited? And why did you prohibit them when Allah did not prohibit them? 146. And unto those who are Jews, we forbade every animal with undivided hoof, and we forbade them the fat of the ox and the sheep, except what adheres to their backs, or their havaya, or is mixed up with a bone. Thus, he recompensed them for their rebellion. And verily, we are truthful. <clears throat> Foods that were prohibited for the Jews because of their transgression. Allah says, We forbade for the Jews every bird and animal with undivided hoof, such as the camel, ostrich, duck, and goose. Allah said here, And we forbade them the fat of the ox and the sheep. The Jews used to forbid these types of foods, saying that Israel or Yaqub used to forbid them for himself, so they too forbid them. This was mentioned by as -Sudi. Ali bin Abi Tala reported that Ibn Abbas said that, except what adheres to their backs, refers to the fat that clings to their backs. Allah said next, or their Havaya, that is, the entrails. According to Abu Jafar bin Jarir, he also said, the meaning here is, and from ox and sheep, we forbade their fat for the Jews, except the fat on their backs and what the entrails carry. Ali bin Abi Tala said that Ibn Abbas said that the Havaya are the entrails. Similar was reported from Mujahid, Said bin Jubair, and al Haq, Allah's statement. Or is mixed up with a bone means we allowed the Jews the fat that is mixed with bones. Ibn Juraj commented the fat on the rump that is mixed with the tailbone was allowed for them, and also the fat on the legs, head, eyes, and what adheres to the bones. As Sudi said similarly, Allah said, Thus we recompense them for their rebellion, meaning we impose this restriction on them as recompense for their rebellion and defying our commandments. Allah said in another ayah, For the wrongdoing of the Jews, we made unlawful for them certain good foods which had been lawful for them, and for their hindering many from Allah's way. 460. Allah's statement, And verily we are truthful, means we were justified in the penalty we gave them. Ibn Jarir commented, We are truthful in what we informed you of, O Muhammad are forbidding these foods for them, not as they claimed that Israel merely forbade these things for himself, so they imitated him, they claimed. <laughs> the 
the trick of the Jews and Allah's curse. Abdullah bin Abbas narrated when Umar bin al Qatar was told that Samura sold liquor. He commented, May Allah fight Samura. Did he not know that the Messenger of Allah said, May Allah curse the Jews. The fats were forbidden for them, so they melted the fat and sold it. This hadith is recorded in the two Sahihs. Jabir bin Abdullah said, In the year of the victory of Mecca, I heard Allah's Messenger saying, Allah and his messenger have forbidden selling alcoholic drinks, intoxicants, dead animals, swine and idols. He was asked, what about the fat of dead animals? <laughs> they are used to dye skins, paint ship, ships and are used as a light by the people. He said, no it, is still al no, it is still unlawful. He then said, may Allah fight the Jews. When Allah forbade them the fats of animals, they melted the fat, sold it and ate its price. The group recorded this hadith. Hundred forty seven. If they deny you say, Your Lord is the owner of vast mercy, and never will his wrath be turned back from the people who are criminals. Allah says, If your opponents among the idolaters, Jews and their likes reject you, O Muhammad, Say, your Lord is the owner of vast mercy, encouraging them to seek Allah's vast mercy and follow his messenger. And never will his wrath be turned back from the people who are criminals, discouraging them from defying the messenger. The final prophet Muhammad, Allah often joins encouragement with threats in the Quran. <laughs> Allah said at the end of the surah, Surely your Lord is swift in retribution. And certainly he is of forgiving, most merciful. 665. Allah also said, But verily your Lord is full of forgiveness for mankind in spite of their wrongdoing. And verily your Lord is also severe in punishment. 13.6. And Declare unto my servants that truly I am the oft forgiving, the most merciful, and that my torment is indeed the most painful torment. 15, 49 and 50 and the forgiver of sin, the acceptor of repentance, the severe in punishment, 43 and verily the punishment of your Lord is severe and painful, verily he it is who begins and repeats and he is oft forgiving, full of love, 85, 12 and 14. There are many other ayat on this subject. 148. Those who committed shirk say, If Allah had willed, we would not have committed shirk, nor would our father, fathers, and we would not have forbidden anything against his will. Likewise, bellied those who were before them, till they tasted our wrath, say, Have you, not, have you any knowledge, proof, that you can produce before us, verily? You follow the sun, and you do nothing but lie. 149. Say, with Allah is the perfect proof and argument, had he so willed. He would indeed have guided you all. 150. Say, bring forward your witnesses who can testify that Allah has forbidden this. Then if they testify, do not testify with them, and do not follow the vain desires of those who belly our ayat and such as believe not in the hereafter, and they hold others as equal with their Lord. <laughs> a false notion and its rebuttal. Here Allah mentioned a debate with the idolaters, refuting a false notion they have over their shirk, and the things that they prohibited. They said, surely Allah has full knowledge of the shirk, we, we indulge in and that we forbid some kinds of wealth Allah is able to change his, his Allah is able to change this shirk by directing us to the faith they claimed and prevent us from falling into disbelief but he did not do that therefore they said Allah indicated that he willed decided and agreed that we do all this they said if Allah had willed we would not have taken partners in worship with him 
nor would our fathers, and we would not have forbidden anything. Allah said in another ayah, and they said, if it, if it had been the will of the most gracious Allah, we should not have worshipped them, false deities. 43.20 Similar is mentioned in Surat Al-Nal. Allah said next, Likewise, belly those who were before them, for by using, the, using and relying on this understanding, the misguided ones before them were led astray. This notion is false and ungranted, for had it been true, Allah would not have harmed them, destroyed them, aided his honorable messengers over them, and made them taste his painful punishment. <laughs> Say, have you any knowledge that Allah is pleased with you and with your ways, that you can produce before us and make it plain, apparent and clear for us? However, verily, you only follow the sun, doubt and wishful thinking, and you do nothing but lie about Allah in the false claims that you utter. Allah said next, <laughs> Say, with Allah is the perfect proof and argument. Had he so willed, he would indeed have guided you all. Allah said to his prophet, Say, O Muhammad to them, with Allah is the perfect proof and argument. <laughs> the perfect wisdom and unequivocal proof to guide whom he wills and misguide whom he wills. Had he so willed, he would indeed have guided you all. All of this happens according to his decree, his will and his choice. So in this way, he is pleased with the believers and angry with the disbelievers. Allah said in other ayat, <laughs> And had Allah willed, he could have gathered them together all on true guidance. 6.35 And and had your Lord willed, those on earth would have be believed all of them together. 10.99 And <clears throat> And if your Lord had so willed, he could surely have made mankind one Ummah, but they would not cease to disagree, except him on whom your Lord has bestowed his mercy, and for that did he create them. And the word of your Lord has been fulfilled. Surely I shall fill hell with jinns and men altogether. 11, 118 and 119. Al Dahak said, No one has an excuse if he disobeys Allah. Surely Allah has the perfect proof established against his servants. Allah said, <clears throat> Bring forward your witnesses, produce your witnesses. Who can testify that Allah has forbidden this, which you have forbidden and lied and invented about Allah in this regard? Then if they testify, do not testify with them, because in this case their testimony is false and untrue. And do not follow the vain desires of those who belly our ayat, and such as believe not in the hereafter, and they hold others as equal with their Lord by associating others with Allah in worship and treating them as equals to him. 151. Say, come, I will recite what your Lord has prohibited you from. Join not anything in worship with him. Be kind and dutiful to your parents. Kill not your children because of poverty. We provide sustenance for you and for them. Come not near the al-fawahish, immoral sins, whether committed openly or secretly. And kill not anyone whom Allah has forbidden, except for a just cause. This, has, this he has commanded you that you may understand. Ten Commandments Dawood al-Avdi narrated that Ash-Shabi said that al kama said that Ibn, Ibn Masud said Whoever wishes to read the will and testament of the Messenger of Allah on which he on which he placed his seal let him read this ayat <coughs> say come i will recite what your lord has prohibited you from join not anything in worship with him until 
so that you may have taqwa 653 in his mustadrak al hakim recorded that ibn abbas said in surah al anam 6 there are clear ayat and they are the mother of the book the quran he then recited say come i will recite what your lord has prohibited you from al hakim said its its chain is sahih and they did not record it in his mustadrak al hakim also recorded it recorded that ubala bin asamit said the messenger of allah said who among you will give me his pledge to do three things he then recited the ayah say come i will recite what your lord has prohibited you from until the end of the ayat he then said whoever whoever fulfills this pledge then his reward will be with allah but whoever fell into shortcomings and allah punishes him for it in this life then that will be his recompense whoever allah delays his reckoning until the hereafter then his matter is with allah if he wills he will punish him and if he wills he will forgive him al-hakim said its chain is sahih and they did not record it as for the explanation of this ayah allah said to his prophet and messenger muhammad say o muhammad to those idolaters who worshiped other than allah forbade what allah provided them with and killed their children following their opinions and the lures of the devils say to them come come here come close i will recite what your lord has prohibited you from meaning i will inform you about what your lord has forbidden for you in truth not guessing or wishful thinking rather it is revelation and an order from him <laughs> Shirk is forbidden. Enjoy not anything in worship with him. This Allah has ordained. For he said at the end of the ayah. This he has commanded you that you may understand. In the two sahis. In the, the two sahis. It is recorded that Abu Dar said that the messenger of Allah said. Jibril came to me and conveyed the good news that. Whoever among your followers dies, worshipping none along with Allah, will enter paradise. I said, even if he stole or committed illegal sexual intercourse, he said, even if he stole or committed illegal sexual intercourse, I said, even if he stole or committed illegal sexual intercourse, he said, even if he stole or committed illegal sexual intercourse, I said, even if he stole or committed illegal sexual intercourse he said even if he stole or committed illegal sexual intercourse or even if drank alcohol some of the musnad and sunan compilers recorded that abu dar said that the messenger of allah said <laughs> allah said o son of adam as long as you supplicate to me and hope of me i will forgive whatever you committed and it will be easy for me to do that and even if you brought the earth's fill of sins to me i will bring forth its fill of forgiveness as long as you do not associate anything or anyone in worship with me and even if your err and your errors accumulate until they reach the boundaries of the sky and you then ask me for forgiveness i will forgive you this subject is also mentioned in the quran for allah said <laughs> Verily, Allah forgives not the sin of setting up partners in worship with him, but he forgives whom he wills, sins other than that. 416. Muslim recorded a hadith in the Sahih that reads, Whoever dies associating none with Allah will enter paradise. There are many ayat and hadiths on this subject. <clears throat> the, order for, for, the order for kindness to parents. Allah said next, be kind and dutiful to your parents, meaning Allah has commanded and ordered you to be kind to your parents. 
Allah said in another ayah, And your Lord has decreed that you worship none but Him, and that you be dutiful to your parents. 17.23 Allah often mentions obeying Him and being dutiful to parents together. Allah said, Give thanks to me and to your parents, and to me is the, is the final destination. But if they both strive with you to make you join in worship with me, others that of which you have no knowledge, then obey them not, but behave with them in this, worldly, in this world kindly, and follow the path of him who turns to me in repentance and in obedience. <laughs> then to me will be your return, and I shall tell you what you used to do. 31, 14 and 15 Therefore Allah ordered children to be dutiful and kind to their parents, even if they were adulterers. Allah also said, <clears throat> And remember when we took a covenant from the children of Israel, saying, Worship none but Allah, and be dutiful and kind to parents. 2, 83 there are several ayat on this subject. It is recorded in the two sahihs that Ibn Masud said, I asked Allah's Messenger about which deed is the best. He said, The prayer when it is performed on time. I said, Then he said, Being dutiful to parents, I asked, Then he said, Jihad in Allah's cause. Ibn Masud said, The Messenger of Allah said these words to me, and had I asked him for more, he would have said more. Killing children is forbidden. Allah said, Kill not your children because of poverty. We shall provide sustenance for you and for them. After Allah commanded kindness to parents and grandparents, he next ordered kindness to children and grandchildren. Allah said, Kill not your children because of poverty because the adulterers used to kill their children. Obeying the laws of the devils, they used to bury their daughters alive for fear of shame, and sometimes kill their sons for fear of poverty. It is recorded in the two, in the two sahihs that Abdullah bin Masud said, I asked the Messenger of Allah which sin is the biggest. He said, to call a rival, rival for Allah while he alone created you. I said, then what? He said, to kill your son for fear that he might share your food. I said, then what? He said, to commit adultery with your neighbor's wife. Then the messenger of Allah recited the ayah. And those who invoke not any other god along with Allah, nor kill such person as Allah has forbidden, except for just cause, nor commit illegal sexual intercourse. 25.68 Allah's statement Because of Imlak refers to poverty According to Ibn Abbas, Qatada, As-Sudi and others The ayah means Do not kill your children because you are poor Allah said in Surat Al-Isra And do not kill your children for fear from Imlak 17.31 That is, do not kill your children for fear that you might become poor in the future This is why Allah said <laughs> We shall provide sustenance for them and for you. 1731 Thus mentioning the provision of the children first, meaning do not fear poverty because of feeding your children. Certainly their provision is provided by Allah. Allah said, <coughs> We provide sustenance for you and for them, thus starting with parents, because this is the appropriate subject here and Allah knows best. Allah said next, Come not near al fawahish immoral sins, whether committed openly or secretly. Allah said in a similar ayah. Say, but the things that my Lord has indeed forbidden are al fawahish immoral sins, whether committed openly or secretly, sins of all kinds, unrighteous oppression, joining partners in worship with Allah, for which he has given no authority, and saying things about Allah of which you have no knowledge. 7.33 We also explain this meaning in the explanation of the ayah. <sighs> Leave sin open and secret. 6.20 The two sahihs recorded that Ibn Masud said that the Messenger of Allah said, 
None is more jealous than Allah. This is why he has forbidden the immoral sins committed openly or secretly. Abdul Malik bin Umayr said that the said that Warad narrated that al mukhira said that Sa'ad bin Ubala said if I see a man with my wife committing adultery I will kill him with the sword when the matter came to the messenger of Allah he said do you wonder at Sa'ad's jealousy by Sa'ad's jealousy by Allah I am more jealous than Sa'ad and Allah is more jealous than I this is why he has forbidden the immoral sins committed openly and in secret this hadith is in the two sahihs. <laughs> the prohibition of unjustified killing. Allah said, And kill not anyone whom Allah has forbid forbidden, except for a just cause, according to Islamic law. This part of the ayah emphasizes this prohibition in specific. Although it is included in the immoral sins committed openly and in secret. In the two sahihs it is recorded that Ibn Masud said that the messenger of Allah said The blood of a Muslim person who testifies that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and that I am the messenger of Allah is prohibited. <laughs> except for free offenses, a married person who commits illegal sexual intercourse life for life and whoever reverts from their religion and abandons the jama the community of faithful believers there is a prof there is a prohibition of a warning and a threat against killing the muahid yeah non-muslims who have a, who have a treaty of peace with muslims al bukhari recorded that abdullah bin ahmed said that the prophet said whoever killed a person having a treaty of protection with muslims shall not smell the scent of paradise though its scent is perceived from a distance of 40 years. Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet said, Whoever killed a person having a treaty of protection with the Muslims and who enjoins, and who enjoys the guarantee of Allah and his messenger, he will have spoiled the guarantee of Allah for him. He shall not smell the scent of paradise, though its smell is perceived from a distance of 70 years. Ibn, ja Ibn Majah and at tirmidhi recorded this hadith and at tirmidhi said Hassan Sahih Allah's statement <laughs> this he has commanded you that you may understand means this is what he has commanded you that you may comprehend his commandments and prohibitions 152 and come not near to the orphan's property except to improve it until he or she attains the age of full strength and give full measure and full weight with justice we burden not any person but that which he can bear and whenever you speak say the truth even if a near relative it is concerned and fulfill the covenant of Allah this he commands you that you may rem remember <clears throat> the prohibition of consuming the orphans property Ata bin As Saib said that Sa'id bin Jubayr said that Ibn Abbas said, When Allah revealed, and come not near the orphan, and come not near to the orphan's property, except to improve it, and verily those who unjustly eat up the property of orphans, those who were guardians of orphans, separate their food from the orphan's food, and their drink from their drink. When any of that food or drink remained, they used to keep it for the orphan until he or she ate it or, or it spoiled. This became difficult for the companions and they talked about it to the messenger of Allah and Allah sent down the ayah and they asked you about orphans. Say, the best thing is to work honestly in their property and if you mix your affairs with theirs then they are your brothers. 2. 220. Thereafter, they mixed their food and drink with food and drink of the orphans. Abu Dawud collected his statement, Allah's statement, until he or she attains the age of full strength, refers to reaching the age of adolescence, according to Ashabi, Malik, and several others among the Salaf. <clears throat> the command to give full measure and full weight with justice. 
Allah's statement, and give full measure and full weight with justice is a command to establish justice while giving and talking. Allah has also warned against abandoning this commandment. When he said, Woe to al mutafin Woe to al mutafifin Those who, when they have to receive by measure from men, demand full measure, and when they have to give by measure or weight to other men, give less than due. Do they not think that they will be resurrected by, for reckoning on a great day? The day when all mankind will stand before the Lord of all that exists. 83, 1 and 6. Allah destroyed an entire nation that was accustomed to giving less in weights and measures. Allah said next, We burden not any person but that which he can bear. That is, whoever strikes whoever strives while pursuing his rights and giving other people's full rights then there is no sin on him if he commits an honest mistake after trying his best and striving to do what is right <laughs> the order for just testimony Allah said and whenever you give your word say the truth even if a near relative is concerned this is similar to his statement O you who believe Stand out firmly for Allah as just witnesses. 5 8. And there is a similar ayah on the in, and there is a similar ayah in Surat Al Nisa. So Allah commands justice in action and statement with both near relatives and distant relatives. Indeed, Allah orders justice for everyone at all, all times and in all situations. <laughs> Fulfilling the covenant of Allah is an obligation, Allah said next, and fulfill the covenant of Allah, Ibn Jarir commented, Allah commands, fulfill Allah's commandments that he has ordered you. You will do so when you obey him in what he commanded, refrain from what he prohibited and abide by his book and the sunnah of his messenger. This constitutes fulfilling the covenant of Allah. <clears throat> this he commands you that you may remember Allah says here that this is what he has ordered and commanded and he stressed its importance for you that you may remember that you may be advised and thus refrain from what you used to do before this 153 and verily this is my straight path so follow it and follow not other paths for they will separate you away from his path this he has ordained for you that you may have taqwa. The command to follow, to follow Allah's straight path and to avoid all other paths. Ali bin Abi Tala reported that Ibn Abbas co commented on Allah's statement, statements. And follow not other paths, for they will separate you away from his path. And saying that you should establish religion and make no divisions in it. 42.13 And similar ayat in the Quran Allah commanded the believers to adhere to the jama and forbade them from causing divisions and disputes. He informed them that those before them were destroyed because of divisions and disputes in the religion of Allah and similar was said by Mujahid and several others. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal recorded that Abdullah bin Masud said the Messenger of Allah drew a line with his hand in the sand and said, This is Allah's path leading, leading straight. He then drew lines to the right and left of that line and said, These are the other paths. On each path there is a devil who calls to it. He then recited, And verily this is my straight path, so follow it and follow not other paths. For they will separate you away from his path. 653. Al Hakim also recorded this hadith and said, Its chain is Sahih, but they did not record it. Imam Ahmad and Abd bin Humaid recorded, and this is the wording of Ahmad that Jabir said, We were sitting with the Prophet when he drew a line in front of him and said, This is Allah's path. He also drew two lines to its right and two lines to its left and said these are the paths of shaitan 
He then placed his hand on the middle path and recited this ayah. 153. And verily, this is my straight path, so follow it, and follow not other paths, for they will separate you away from his path. This he has ordained for you, that you may have taqwa. Imam Ahmad ibn Majah in the book of the Sunnah, in his Sunan, and al Basar collected this hadith. Ibn Jari recorded that a man asked Ibn Masud, What is Asirat al Mustaqim? The straight path. Ibn Masud replied, Muhammad left us at its lower end and its other end is in paradise. To the right of this path are, are other paths, and to the left of it are other paths, and there are men on these paths calling those who pass by them. Whoever goes on the other paths will end up in the fire. Whoever takes the straight path will end up in paradise. Ibn Masud then recited the ayah. And verily, this is my straight path, so follow it, and follow not other paths, for they will separate you away from his path. Imam Ahmad recorded that An Nawaz bin Saman said that the Messenger of Allah said, Allah has given a parable of the straight path, and on the two sides of this path, there are two walls containing doorways. On these doorways, there are curtains that are lowered down on the gate of this path. There is a caller heralding, O people, come and enter the straight path altogether and do not de divide. There is also another caller that heralds from above the path, who says when a person wants to remove the curtain on any of these doors, Woe to you, do not open this door, for if you open it, you will enter it. The straight path is Islam. The two walls are Allah's set limits. The open doors led to Allah's prohibitions. The caller on the gate of the path is Allah's book, the Quran, while the caller from, the, from above the path is Allah's admonition in the heart of every Muslim. Al-Tirmidhi and al nasai also recorded this hadith, and Al-Tirmidhi said Hassan Garib, Allah's statement. So follow it, and follow not other paths, describes Allah's path in the singular sense, because truth is one. Allah describes the other paths in the plural, because they are many and are di divided, Allah said in another ayah. Allah is the Vali, protector or guardian, of those who believe. He brings them out from darknesses into light. But as for those who disbelieve, their supporters are Taghut, false deities. They bring them out from light into darkness. Those are the dwellers of the fire, and they will abide therein forever. 2. 257. 154. Then we gave Musa the book, the Tavra, complete for that which is best. And explaining all things in detail, and a guidance, and a mercy, that they might believe in the meeting with their Lord. 155. And this is a blessed book, the Quran, which we have sent down. So follow it and have taqwa so that you may receive mercy. Praising the Tavra and the Quran. After Allah described the Quran by saying, and verily, this is my straight path, so follow it. He then praised the Tavra and its messenger. Then we gave Musa the book. Allah often mentions the Quran and the Tavra together, Allah said. And before this was the scripture of Musa as a guide and a mercy. And this is a confirming book in the Arabic language. 46.12 Allah said in the beginning of this surah, Say, who then sent down the book which Musa brought, a light and a guidance to mankind which you have made into paper sheets, disclosing some of it and concealing much, 691, and, and this is a blessed book which we have sent down, 692, Allah said about the idolaters, but when the truth has come to them from us, uh, 
when, but when the truth has come to them from us, they say, Why is he not given the like of what was given to Musa? 28, 48. Allah replied, Did they not disbelieve in that which was given to Musa of old? They say, Two kinds of magic, the Tavra and the Quran, each helping the other. And they say, Rarely in both we are disbelievers. 28, 48. Allah said about the jinns that they said, O our people, verily we have heard a book sent down after Musa, confirming what came before it. <laughs> it guides to the truth. 46, 30. Allah's statement, complete for that which is best, and explaining all things in detail means we made the book that we revealed to Musa a complete and comprehensive book sufficient for what he needs to complete his law similarly Allah said in another ayah and we wrote for him on the tablets the lesson to be drawn from all things 745 Allah's statement for that which is best means as a reward for his doing right and obeying our commands and orders. Allah said in other ayat, Is there any reward for good other than what is best? 55, 60. And remember when the Lord of Ibrahim tried him with certain commands, which he fulfilled, he, Allah said to him, Verily, I am going to make you an imam for mankind. 2, 124. And, and we made from among them children of Israel, leaders giving guidance under our command. When they were patient and believed with certainty in our ayat, 32, 24, Allah said, and explaining all things in detail and the guidance and the mercy, praising the book that Allah sent down to Musa, while that they might believe in the meeting with their Lord. And this is a blessed book, the Quran, which we have sent down, so follow it and have taqwa, so that you may receive mercy. This calls to following the Quran. Allah encourages his servants to follow his book, the Quran, and orders them to understand it, adhere to it and call to it. He also describes it as being blessed for those who follow and implement it in this life and the hereafter, because it is the firm rope of Allah. 156. Lest you should say, the book was sent down only to two sects before us, and for our part we were in fact unaware of what they studied. 157. Or lest you should say, if only the book had been sent down to us, we would surely have been better guided than they. So now has come unto you a clear proof from your Lord, and a guidance and a mercy. Who then does more wrong than one who rejects the ayat of Allah and Sadafa? Away therefrom, we shall requite those who turn away from our ayat with an evil torment because of their turning away. The Quran is Allah's proof against his creation. Ibn Jarir commented on the ayah. The ayah means this is a book what we sent down. This is a book that we sent down. So that you do not say the book was sent down only to two sects before us. This way you will have no excuse. Allah said in another ayah. Otherwise they would have suffered a calamity because of what their hands sent forth and said our Lord, why did you not send us a messenger? We would then have followed your ayat. 28, 47, the ayah. The two, to two sects before us refers to the Jews and Christians, according to Ali bin Abi Talha, who narrated it from Ibn Abbas. Similar was reported from Mujahid, Asudi, Qatada, and several others. Allah's statement. And for our part, we were in fact unaware of what they studied, meaning we did not understand what they said because the revelation was not in our tongue. We indeed were busy and unaware of their message. So they said, 
Allah said next. Or lest you should say, if only the book had been sent down to us, we would surely have been better guided than they. Meaning we also refuted this excuse had you used it. Lest you say, if a book was revealed to us, just as they received a book, we would have been better guided than they are. Allah also said, and they swore by Allah their most binding oath, that if a warner came to them, they would be more guided than any of the nations before them. 35, 42. Allah replied here, So now has come unto you a clear proof from your Lord, and a guidance and a mercy. Allah says, There has come to you from Allah a glorious Quran revealed to Muhammad, the Arab prophet. In it is the explanation of the lawful and unlawful matters, guidance for the hearts and, uh, and mercy from Allah to his servants who follow and implement it. Allah said, Who then does more wrong than one who rejects the ayat of Allah and Sadafa away therefrom? This refers to the one who neither benefited from what the messenger brought nor followed what he was sent with by abandoning all other ways. Rather, he Sadafa from following the ayat of Allah, meaning he discouraged and hindered people from following it. This is the explanation of as Sudi for Sadafa. While Ibn Abbas, Mujahid and Qatada said that Sadafa means he turned away from it. Hundred fifty eight. Do they then wait for anything other than that the angels should come to them? Or that your Lord should come, or that some of the signs of your Lord should come, the day that some of the signs of your Lord do come, no good will it do to a person to believe them, uh, to believe then, if he believed not before, nor earned good with his faith. Say, wait, you, we too are waiting. The disbelievers await the commencement of the hereafter, or some of its portents. Allah sternly threatens the disbelievers, those who defy his messengers, <laughs> deny his ayat and hinder from his path. Do they then wait for anything other than that the angels should come to them? Or that your Lord Allah should come? on the day of resurrection or that some of the signs of your Lord should come the day that some of the signs of your Lord do come no good will it do to a person to believe them before the commencement of the day of resurrection there will come signs and portents of the last hour that will be witnessed by the people living at that time in a section explaining this ayah Al-Bukhari recorded that Abu Huraira said that the messenger of Allah said, The last hour will not commence until the sun rises from the west. When the people witness that, they will all believe. This is when no good will it do to a person to believe then if he believed not before. Ibn Jarir recorded that Abu Huraira said that the messenger of Allah said, Free if they appear, then a soul will not benefit from its fate. If it had not believed before or earned good in its fate, when the sun rises from the west, Al Dajjal and the beast of the earth, Ahmad also recorded this hadith, and in his narration, the Prophet mentioned the smoke. Imam Ahmad recorded that Ahmed bin Jarir said, Three Muslim men sat with Marwan in Al Madinah, and they heard him talking about the signs of the last hour. He said that the first sign, will be the appearance of Al Dajjal. So these men went to Abdullah bin Amr and told him what they heard from Marwan about the signs. Ibn Amr said, Marwan said nothing. I remember that I heard the Messenger of Allah say, <laughs> the first of the signs to appear are the sun rising from the west and the beast that appears in the early morning, whichever comes before the other. Then the second sign will appear soon after it. 
then Abdullah said and he used to read the scriptures and I think the first of them is the sun rising from the west that is because when it sets it comes under the throne prostrates and seeks permission to return so it is permitted to return until Allah wants it to rise from the west so it does as it normally would it comes beneath the throne it prostrates and seeks permission to return but it will get no response then it will seek permission to return again but it will get no response until what Allah wills of the night to pass goes by and it realizes that if it is permitted to return it will not be able to reach the east it says my lord the east is so far what go what good would i be to the people until the horizons appears uh, until the horizons appear as a lightless ring it seeks permission to return and is told rise from your place so it rises upon the people from where it sets then he recited no good will it do to a person to believe them if he believed not before <laughs> this was also recorded by Muslim in his Sahih and Abu Dawud and Ibn Majah in their Sunans Allah's statement no good will it do to a person who uh, to believe then if he believed not before means when the disbeliever believes then it will not be accepted from him as for those who were believers before if they earned righteous deeds they will have earned a great deal of good if they had not done good nor repented before then it will not be accepted accepted from them according to the hadiths that we mentioned this is also the meaning of Allah's statement nor earn good through his fate meaning once good deeds will not be accepted from him unless he performed good deeds before Allah said next say wait you we too are waiting this is a stern threat to the disbelievers and a sure promise for those who delay embracing the faith and repenting until a time when faith or repentance shall not avail this will occur when the sun rises from the west because the last hour will, will then will then be imminent and its major signs will have begun to appear Allah said in other ayat do they then await anything other than the hour that it should come upon them suddenly but some of its portents have already come and when it is upon them how can they benefit then by their reminder 47 18 and so when they saw our punishment they said we believe in Allah alone and reject all that we used to associate with him as partners then their faith could not avail them when they saw our punishment 40 84 and 85 159 verily those who divide their religion and break up into sects you have no concern with them in the least their affair is only with Allah who then will who then will tell them what they used to do <laughs> criticizing division in the religion Mujahid, Katala, al dahak and Asudi said that this ayah was revealed about the Jews and Christians al Abfi said that Ibn Abbas commented verily those who divide their religion and break up into sects before Muhammad was sent the Jews and Christians disputed and divided into sects when Muhammad was sent Allah revealed to him verily those who divide their religion and break up into sects you have no concern with them in the least it is apparent that this ayah refers to all those who defy the religion of Allah or revert from it Allah sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth so that he makes it victorious and dominant above all religions his law is one and does not contain any contradiction or inc incongruity therefore those who dispute in the religion and break up into sects religious sects just like those who follow the various sects desires and misguidance then Allah has purified his messenger from their ways in a similar ayah Allah said <laughs> 
He, Allah, has ordained for you the same religion which He ordained for Nu, and that which He has and that which He have revealed for to you. Forty-two, thirteen. A hadith reads: We, the prophets, are half brothers, but have one religion. This, indeed, is the straight path which the messengers have brought and which commands worshiping Allah alone without partners and adhering to the law of the last messenger whom Allah sent. All other paths are types of misguidance, ignorance, sheer opinion, and desires, and as such, the messengers are free from them. Allah said here, You have no concern with them in the least. 659. Allah's statement. Their affair is only with Allah. Who then will tell them what they used to do? It's similar to a statement. Verily, those who believe and those who are Jews and the Sabians and the Christians and the Majus and those who worship others besides Allah, truly Allah will judge between them on the day of resurrection. 22.17 Allah then mentioned his kindness in his decisions and in his justice on the day of resurrection when he said, <laughs> 160. Whoever brings a good deed shall have ten times the like thereof to his credit, and whoever brings an evil deed shall have only the recompense of the like thereof, and they will not be wronged. 160. The good deed is multiplied tenfold, while the sin is recompensed with the same. This ayah explained the general ayah. Whoever comes with good, then he will receive better than that. 2884. There are several hadiths that are in agreement with the apparent wording of this honorable ayah. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal recorded that Ibn Abbas said that the Messenger of Allah said about his Lord, Your Lord is most merciful. Whoever intends to perform a good deed and does not do it, it will be written for him as a good deed. If he performs it, it will be written for him as ten deeds to 700 to multifold whoever intends to commit an evil deed but does not do it it will be written for him as a good deed if he commits it it will be written for him as a sin unless Allah erases it only those who deserve destruction will be destroyed by Allah Al-Bukhari, Muslim and an nasai also recorded this hadith Ahmad also recorded that Abu Dhar said that the messenger of Allah said <laughs> Allah says, whoever performs a good deed will have tenfold for it and more. Whoever commits a sin, then his recompense will be the same, unless I forgive. Whoever commits the earth's fill of sins and then meets me while associating none with me, I will give him its fill of forgiveness. Whoever draws closer to me by a hand span, I will draw closer to him by a forearm's length. Whoever draws closer to me by a forearm's length, I will draw closer to him by an arm's length. And whoever comes to me walking, I will come to him running. Muslim also collected this hadith. Know that there are three types of people who refrain from committing a sin that they intended. There are those who refrain from committing the sin because they fear Allah, and thus will have written for them a good deed as a reward. This type of this type contains both good uh, this type contains both a good intention and a good deed. In some narrations of the Sahih, Allah says about this type, He has left the sin for my sake. Another type does not commit the sin because of forgetfulness or being busy attending to other affairs. This type of person will neither earn a sin nor a reward, the reason being that this person did not intend to do good nor commit evil. Some people abandon the sin because they were unable to commit it or due to laziness after trying to commit it and seeking the means that help commit it. This person is just like the person who commits the sin. There is an authentic hadith that states, <clears throat> When two Muslims meet with their swords, then the killer and the killed will be in the fire. They said, O oh Allah's Messenger, we know about the killer, so what, so what about the killed? He said, He was eager to kill his companion. Al-Hafiz Abu al-Qasim 
At-Tabarani said that Abu Malik al-Ashari said that the Messenger of Allah said Friday prayer to the next Friday prayer plus three more days erased whatever was committed of sins between them. This is because Allah says whoever brings a good deed shall have ten times the like thereof to his credit. Abidar narrated that the Messenger of Allah said whoever fasts three days every month will have fasted all the time. Ahmad, al Nasai, and even Marja recorded this hadith and this is Ahmad's wording. At-Tirmidhi also recorded it with this addition. So Allah sent down affirmation of this statement in his book. Whoever brings a good deed shall have ten times the like thereof to his credit. Therefore a day earns ten days. Al-Tirmidhi said, This hadith is Hassan. There are many other hadiths and statements on this subject, but what we mentioned should be sufficient. Allah willing and our trusting and our trust is in him. 161 say truly my lord has guided me to a straight path a right religion the religion of ibrahim hanifan monotheism and he was not of the mushrikin Panna 62 say verily my salah my sacrifice my living and my dying are for allah the lord of all that exists Panna 63 he has no partner and of this i have been commanded and i am the first of the muslims Islam is the straight path. Allah commands his prophet, the chief of the messengers, to convey the news of being guided to Allah's straight path. <laughs> this path is neither wicked nor deviant, a right religion that is established on firm grounds. <laughs> the religion of Ibrahim, Hanifan, and he was not of the Mushrikin. Allah said in similar ayat, and who turns away from the religion of Ibrahim except him who deludes himself? 230 and And strive hard in Allah's cause as you ought to strive. He has chosen you and has not laid upon you in religion any hardship. It is the religion of your father Ibrahim. 2278 and Verily, Ibrahim was an Ummah, or a nation, obedient to Allah, a Hanif, and he was not one of the Mushrikin. He was thankful for, for his Allah's favors. He, Allah, chose him as an intimate friend and guided him to a straight path. And we gave him good in this world, and in the hereafter he shall be of the righteous. Then we have sent the, the revelation to you, saying, Follow the irreligious... Re Follow the religion of Ibrahim. He was a Hanif, and he was not of the Mushrikin. 16, 120, and 123. Ordering the Prophet to follow the religion of Ibrahim, the Hanifiyah, does not mean that Prophet Ibrahim reached more perfection in it than our Prophet. Rather, our Prophet perfectly established the religion, and it was completed for him, and none before him reached this level of perfection. This is why he is the final prophet, the chief of all the children of Adam, who holds the station of praise and glory, the honor of intercession on the day of resurrection. All creation on that day will seek him, even, even Ibrahim, the friend of Allah, peace be upon him, to request the beginning of judgment. Imam Ahmad recorded that Ibn Abbas said, the messenger of Allah was asked, which religion is the best with Allah? The exalted, he said, Al Hanifiyah as -sam -as <laughs> Al Hanifiya as Samha, the easy monotheism. The command for sincerity in worship. Allah said next, Say, Verily, my salah, my sacrifice, my living and my dying are for Allah, the Lord of the Lord of the all that exists. Allah commands the Prophet to inform the idolaters who worship other than Allah and sacrifice to something other than him that he opposes them in all this. For his prayer is for Allah, and his rituals are in his name on, are in are in his name alone, without partners. Allah said in a similar statement, 
Therefore, turn in prayer to your Lord and sacrifice. 102, uh, 108.2 Meaning, make your prayer and sacrifice for Allah alone. As for the idolaters, they used to worship the idols and sacrifice to them. So Allah commanded the Prophet to defy them and contradict their practices. Allah, the exalted, commanded him to de dedicate his intention and heart to being sincere for him alone. Mujahid commented, Verily, my prayer and my nusuk refers to sacrificing during Hajj and Umrah. Islam is the religion of all prophets, the ayah, and I am the first of the Muslims, means from this ummah, according to Qatada. This is a sound meaning, because all prophets before our prophet were calling to Islam, which commands worshipping Allah alone without partners. Allah said in another ayah, And we did not send any messenger before you, but we revealed to him, saying, None has the right to be worshipped but I, so worship me. 21. 25. Allah informed us that Nuh said to his people, But if you turn away, then no reward have I asked of you. My reward is only from Allah, and I have been commanded to be of the Muslims. 10.72. Allah said, And who turns away from the religion of Ibrahim except him who deludes himself? Truly, it shows him in this world, and verily, in the hereafter he will be among the righteous. When his Lord said to him, Submit, ye be a Muslim, he said, I have submitted myself as a Muslim to the Lord of the all that exists. And this was enjoined by Ibrahim upon his sons and by Yaqub, saying, O my sons, Allah has chosen for you the true religion. Then die not except as Muslims. 2, 130 and 132. Yusuf, peace be upon him, said, My Lord, you have indeed bestowed on me of the sovereignty and taught me something of the interpretation of dreams. The only creator of the heavens and the earth, you are my Vali, protector in this world and in the hereafter. Cause me to die as a Muslim and join me with the righteous. 12, 101. Musa said, And Musa said, O my people, if you have believed in Allah, then put your trust in him, if you are Muslims. They said, In Allah we put our trust. Our Lord, make us not a trial for the folk who are wrongdoers, and save us by your mercy from the disbelieving folk. 10, 84 and 86, Allah said. Verily, we did send down the Tavra, therein was guidance and light by which the prophets who submitted themselves to Allah's will judged for the Jews and the rabbis and the priests did also. 5.44 and, and, and when I, Allah, inspired al Havariyun, the, the disciples of Isa, to believe in me and my messenger, they said, We believe and bear witness that we are Muslims. 511. Therefore, Allah states that He sent all His messengers with the religion of Islam, although their respective laws differed from each other, and some of them abrogated others. Later on, the laws sent with Muhammad abrogated all previous laws, and nothing will ever abrogate it, forever. Certainly, Muhammad's law will always be apparent, and, it, and its flags rise, raised high until the day of resurrection. The Prophet said, We the Prophets are half-brothers, but our religion is one. Half-brothers mentioned in the Hadith refers to the brothers to one father, but different mothers. Therefore, the religion representing the one father is one, worshipping Allah alone without partners, even though the laws which are like the different mothers in this parable are different. Allah is the... Allah, the Most High, knows best. Imam Ahmad recorded that Ali said that when the Messenger of Allah used to start the prayer with takbir, saying, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the Great, he would then supplicate, I have directed my face towards he who has created the heavens and earth, Hanifan, 
and I am not among the mushrikin. Certainly, my prayer, sacrifice, living and dying are all for Allah, Lord of the worlds. O oh Allah, you are the king. There is no deity worthy of worship except you. You are my Lord and I am your servant. I have committed wrong against myself and admitted to my error, so forgive me all my sins. Verily, you, only you forgive the sins. O oh Allah, direct me to the best conduct. For none except you directs to the best conduct. Divert me from the worst conduct. For only you divert from the worst conduct. Glorified and exalted you are. I seek your forgiveness and repent to you. This hadith, which was also recorded by Muslim in the Sahih, continues and mentions the Prophet's supplication in his bowing, prostrating and final sitting positions. 164 say, Shall I seek a Lord other than Allah, while he is the Lord of all things? No person earns any sin except against himself only, and no bearer of burdens shall bear the burden of another. Then unto your Lord is your return, so he will tell you that wherein you have been differing. <clears throat> the command the command to this the command to sincerely trust in Allah. Allah said, Say, O Muhammad, to those idolaters about worshipping Allah alone and trusting in Him. Shall I seek a Lord other than Allah? 664. While He is the Lord of all things, and who protects and saves me, and governs all my affairs, but I only trust in Him and go back to Him because he is the lord of everything owner of all things and his is the creation of and his is the creation and the decision this ayah commands sincerely trusting in allah uh, sincerely trusting allah while the ayah before it commands sincerely worshiping allah alone without partners these two meanings are often mentioned together in the quran allah directs his servants to proclaim you alone we worship and you alone we ask for help, for each and everything. 1. 5. Allah said, So worship him and put your trust in him. 11. 123. And say, He is the most gracious Allah, in him we believe, and in him we put our trust. 67. 29. And Lord of the East and the West, none has the right to be worshipped but he. So take him a guardian. 73 9. There are similar ayat on this subject. <clears throat> Every person carries his own burden. Allah said, No person earns any sin except against himself only, and no bearer of burdens shall bear the burden of another, thus emphasizing Allah's reckoning, decision, and justice that will occur on the day of resurrection. The souls will only be recompensed for their deeds, good for good and evil for evil. No person shall carry the burden of another person, a fact that indicates Allah's perfect justice. Allah said in other ayat, And if one heavily laden calls another to bear his load, nothing of it will be lifted even though he be near of kin. 35, 18 and then he will have no fear of injustice nor of any curtailment of his reward 20 112 scholars of tafsir commented no person will be wronged by carrying the evil deeds of another person nor will his own good deeds be curtail curtailed or decreased allah also said Every person is a pledge for what he has earned, except those on the right, 74, 38 and 39, meaning every person will be tied to his evil deeds, but for those on the right, the believers, the blessing of their good works will benefit their offspring and relatives as well. Allah said in Surat At-Tud, and those who believe and whose offspring follow them in faith, to them shall be joined their offspring. 
and we shall not decrease the reward of their deeds in anything. 52.21 meaning we shall elevate their offspring to their high grades in paradise, even though the deeds of the offspring were less righteous, since they shared faith with them in its general form. Allah says we did not decrease the grades of these righteous believers, so that those their offspring and relatives who have lesser grades can share the same grades as them. Rather, Allah elevated the lesser believers to the grades of their parents by the blessing of their parents' good works, by his favor and bounty. Allah said next in Surat Atur, Every person is a pledge for that which he has earned. 52.21 Meaning of evil. Allah's statement here. Then unto your Lord is your return. So he will tell you that wherein you have been differing means work you disbelievers and we will also work. Surely both you and us will be gathered to Allah and he will inform us of our deeds and your deeds and the decision of what we used to dispute about in the life of this world. Allah said in other ayat, Say, you will not be asked about our sins, nor shall we be asked of what you do. Say, our Lord will assemble us all together, then he will judge between us with truth, and he is the just judge, the all-knower of the true state of affairs. 34, 25 and 26 165 <laughs> And it is he who has made you generations coming after generations, replacing each other on the earth, and he has raised you in ranks, some above others, that he may try you in that which he has bestowed on you. Surely your Lord is swift in retribution, and certainly he is oft forgiving, most merciful. Allah made mankind dwellers on the earth, generation after generation, of various grades, in order to test them. Allah said, And it is he who has made you generations coming after generations, replacing each other on the earth. Meaning, he made you dwell on the earth generation after generation, century after century, and offspring after forefathers. According to Ibn Said and others, Allah also said, and if it were our will, we would have made angels to replace you on the earth. 43, 60. And, and makes you inheritors of the earth, generations after generations. 27, 62. And, verily, I am going to place mankind, generations after generations, on earth. 2, 30. And, it may be that your Lord will destroy your enemy and make you successors on the earth, so that he may see how you act. 729 Allah's statement And he has raised you in ranks. Some above others means he has made you different from each other with regards to provision, conduct, conduct qualities, evilness, shapes, color of skin, and so forth. And he has the perfect wisdom in all this. Allah said in other ayat. <laughs> it is we who portion out between them their livelihood in this world. And we raised some of them above others in ranks. So that some may employ others in their work. 43, 32. And see how we prefer one above another in this world. And verily, the hereafter will be greater in degrees and greater in preferment. 17.21 Allah's statement That he may try you in that which he has bestowed on you, means so that he tests you in what he has granted you. For Allah tries the rich concerning his wealth, and will ask him about how he, he appreciated it. He also tries the poor concerning his poverty, and will ask him about his patience with it. Muslim recorded that Abu Sayyid al Qudri said that the Messenger of Allah said, <laughs> Verily, this life is beautiful and green, and Allah made you dwell in it generation after generation, so that he sees what you will do. 
Therefore, beware of this life and beware of woman, for the first trial that the children of Israel suffered from was with woman, Allah's statement. Surely your Lord is swift in retribution, and certainly he is oft forgiving, most merciful. This is both discouragement and encouragement by reminding the believers that Allah is swift in reckoning and punishment with those who disobey him and defy his messengers. And certainly he is oft forgiving, most merciful for those who take him as protector and follow his messengers in the news and commandments they conveyed. Allah often mentions these two attributes together in the Quran. Allah said, But verily your Lord is full of forgiveness for mankind in spite of their wrongdoing, and verily your Lord is also severe in punishment. 13 6 and Declare unto my servants and that truly I am the oft forgiving, the most merciful, and that my torment is indeed the most uh, painful torment. 15, 49 and 50. There are similar ayat that contains encouragement and discouragement. Sometimes Allah calls his servants to him with encouragement, describing paradise and making them eager for what he has with them with him. Sometimes he calls his servants with discouragement mentioning the fire and its torment and punishment as well as the day of resurrection and its horrors. Sometimes Allah mentions both so that each person is affected by it according to his or her qualities. We ask Allah that he makes us among those who obey what he has commanded, avoid what he has prohibited and believe in him as he has informed. Certainly he is near, hears and answers this supplication and he is the most kind, generous and bestowing. Imam Ahmad recorded that Abu Huraira said that the Messenger of Allah said, If the believer knew Allah's punishment, no one will hope in entering his paradise. And if the disbeliever knew Allah's mercy, no one will hope no one will no one will feel hopeless of acquiring paradise. Allah created a hundred kinds of mercy. He sent down one of them to his creation and they are merciful to each other on that account. With Allah there remains 99 kinds of mercy. Muslim and At-Tirmidhi also recorded this hadith. At-Tirmidhi and At-Tirmidhi said Hassan. Abu Huraira narrated that the Messenger of Allah said, When Allah created the creation, he wrote in a book, and this book is with him above the throne. My mercy overcomes my anger. This is the end of the tafsir of Surat al-Anam. All the thanks and appreciation for Allah.